Well, my friends, we have at last arrived at the entrance to Sapphire City. Uh, no offense, Your Grace, but there's nothing here except a dingy little boat. Well, would you expect the blooming city to be above water? Well, yeah. So what, we have to row our way to the city? That's correct. We don't row. The boat will just take us out of the city. Oh, and how long will that take? Eh, roughly five to six days. Why? Uh, no reason in particular? Well, we should prepare ourselves for the long journey. Gather supplies and then we shall set off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Soon, my friend, we shall meet and conquer the world. <laughs> Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks. Greetings, travelers. I'm the C dot that knows a lot, Dr. Waluigi. While I still have some time left before my next adventure, I thought that this month we would take a look at one of the most beloved children's adventure novels of all time, The Wizard of Oz. Not only is this one of the most beloved and long-running book series of all time, written by L. Frank Baum, then later other members of his family would continue the legacy with other books in the series. Which brings me to the bastardization of the Muppets spinoff that nobody asked for, but hey, if Tom and Jerry can make a decent version of the story, surely the Muppets can, right? Right? <sighs> this is... The Muppets Wizard of Oz. Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks. This movie is, like I said before, based on the book written by L. Frank Baum and Jim Henson's The Muppets. For those of you that don't know, The Muppets are puppets created by the late Jim Henson and have been around for 65 years. The Muppets have appeared in several films, TV series, and video games, just to name a few of the things of their legacy. Unfortunately, this movie came out during a time when the Muppets were starting to lose not only their audience, but were making some of the worst material of all time. Seriously, this movie came out in 2002, and it took till 2011 for the Muppets to become relevant again. But that's for another time. Right now, we have a whole movie to get through. Where my brain should be, there's a cow. The plot of this movie follows a young teenager named Dorothy Gale who wants to leave her dreary hometown of Kansas to become a star with the Muppets. After she misses her audition, she returns home only to get swept away to Oz, where she is told to meet the wizard who can grant her wish. Along the way, she meets other characters who want something that the wizard might be able to give them. Can Dorothy make it to the wizard and get her wish granted? Will she be able to avoid the evils that Oz presents? Well, trust me, you'll find out. Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks... If there's one thing this movie got horribly wrong, it's the characters. Dorothy is a stuck-up prima donna who treats her friends and family like complete and utter garbage. Toto is played by Pepe the King Prong, who many consider to be the most annoying Muppet of all time, and in this movie is only useful three times throughout. And that describes the entire cast, really. They're either stuck-up assholes or so annoying you wish to high heaven to have them shut up. The only characters that I didn't want to strangle were the wizard and the three companions and the munchkins, but that was only because they were in the movie for a short time. And that's pretty much it. So, really, are there any positives I can mention in this movie? Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks... The few positives I can give this movie really only relate to the references that the movie has, such as why the Wicked Witch of the West can s only send out the flying monkeys because of the magic cap she wears, or that they make the wizard appear as the correct form to each of the companions, like a beast to the lion, or a ball of fire to the scarecrow. Hell, they make Statler and Waldorf the Kali does, which were beasts in the book that had tigers' heads and bears' bodies. For a direct-to-DVD movie, it's impressive how much they took from the book and got most of it right. I just wish that the rest of the movie had a lot more going for it than just the references. Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. 
where I'm most focused. As I previously stated, the characters in this movie are horrendous. One problem faced right away is the portrayal of the four witches. They're all played by Miss Piggy. This wouldn't be a problem if she played the wicked witches only, but she also plays the two good witches who act the same as the two wicked witches. So it doesn't make sense why she would not try to split her personality into two good witches and two evil witches. Another very glaring problem that kept bothering me was the CGI. Especially when they use it to make the Emerald City. The Emerald City looks like something out of a shitty PS2 game. Thankfully, we only see this problem in the movie twice, as, but god is it distracting. Finally, what makes this particular movie horrible is that it's not funny. The Muppets are known for making wonderful and funny movies, but this movie feels like it was written by the s writers of the scary movies. It's that horrible to sit through. Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks. While this movie is not the worst in terms of Oz parody movies, it is still bogged down with awful characters, awful special effects, and one of the worst soundtracks ever put on film. This film, in my opinion, is worse than the Muppets from Space and the Letters from Santa special. I give this movie a 3 out of 10. If it weren't for the ending, two good songs, and Gonzo and Fozzie, it would be a billion times worse. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, I'm Dr. Waluigi, and remember, don't judge a book by its cover, because you'll never know what you find inside. Good night, everybody. Okay, I'm all set for this journey. Good. Cast off, Mr. Magden. Oi, oi, sir. Just two more months, and then I'm home. Hopefully. Where my brain should be, there's a cavity. Where most folks have hearts, I've got old spare parts. Hmm. Now I'm on my own in the great unknown. And it's more than one person can bear. Bear? Ah, where? Well, now I got some smart new partners who can help me. Humble servant of the law. Pretend like you like it. Its majesty and fairness I adhere to without flaw. But when I see the impudence in which this hoodlum wallows, I can only reach one verdict, which ipso facto is as follows. This boy is guilty. Guilty! If he's let go, no grown-up would be safe. This boy's been on mischief, you can see.